Hey, hello, welcome back to my series on practical structural engineering. This is Engineered Mojo. Today we're going to be talking about the design of shear reinforcement in a concrete beam. As always, this series is dedicated to the practical side and design of structural engineering, what you'll see in practice, at least what I see in practice. Uh, this is less classroom and theory, more work related type topics. And so if you're a structural engineer in practice, you're in the right place. If you're a student, you are still in the right place. You can use this in class. This is, these are things you do learn in class. But you can always use this as well to kind of prepare yourself for what you will typically see in your day-to-day -day, uh, efforts as a practicing structural engineer. So with that said, let's get this tutorial started. As a quick aside, please like and subscribe. If you find any value in this video, please like. If you want to continue to see these videos, please subscribe. I right now I have a schedule of t one video every two weeks. I'm going to try and increase that to one every week. So please jump on board. And as always, if you find any mistakes in this tutorial, if you want to add any tips or shortcuts or provide any kind of information, please comment down below. I'm trying to create a community here, so I would love to hear from you, whether it's criticism or praise. So putting that aside, let's get back to the tutorial. We're going to have our givens. And from there, we have our factor design shear of 35 kips, factor design moment of 15 kip per foot, and this is the moment at the max shear that we're designing for so this is the moment where the 35 kips is occurring then we have the strength of the concrete of 3000 psi the strength of the reinforcement is 60,000 psi FYT is just a shear reinforcement FY is the tension reinforcement you have D equals 14 inches D is the depth of the rebar from the compression face this is your tension reinforcement so that's 14 inches do not confuse this with 16 inches, which is the depth of the beam. So make sure you make that differentiation. And then we have B, which is the width of the concrete of 12 inches. The first step you want to do is to determine the shear capacity of the concrete section, VC. This is an equation I pulled straight from ACI. Please make sure to download the PDF below that I provide, which is a step-by-step -step guide, because I tell you the section that you can find these equations. Try to call that out. And this is VC equals 2BD lambda, I believe. I'm not too certain on my Greek characters. Please call me out if I am wrong. Uh, times the square root of F prime C. And if you plug in that in, you see it's 2 times 12 inches, which is the width of your beam, times 14 inches, the depth of the tension reinforcement please do not confuse D with the depth of the beam times 1 I'll show you where I get that to the right times the square root of 3000 psi and I get VC equals 18.4 kips you want to apply a strength reduction factor phi on that VC so phi VC equals 0 0.75 and I also tell you where I got the 0 0.75 from in ACI 318 I am using version 14 so 0 0.75 times 18.4 kips equals 13.8 kips. That is our factored VC, strength of concrete section. Next step is determine whether or not shear reinforcement is even required. And basically you're going to compare your factored strength of your concrete section where no steel is being factored in. And you're going to compare it to the design shear that you're designing for which is in our case 35 kips and as you see phi VC equals 13.8 kips that is less than the 2 times VU of 35 kips which equals 70 kips so shear reinforcement is required in our case to go back a little bit and kind of explain that and to give you some more insight you see that there's two uh, scenarios if phi VC is greater than 2 VU no shear, reinf no shear reinforcement is required if phi VC is less than 2 VU like in our case shear reinforcement is required 
Now let's say we were off by maybe two or three kips um, to where we wouldn't need shear reinforcement. I do provide in the PDF uh, the place where you can look and see the less conservative equation for phi VC. You want to use this if you're only off by two or three or four kips because you may be able to squeeze out extra capacity from the concrete section so that shear reinforcement isn't required. The VC equation at the top of this uh, <laughs> screen, VC equals 2BD lambda square root F prime C, that is a conservative equation. So make sure you note that. But after you determine whether shear reinforcement is required, you want to determine whether you need to design just for minimum shear reinforcement if you, or if you need to go into more detail in designing the shear reinforcement. So you have two checks here. If VU, the design shear that you're designing for, is less than phi VC, the capacity of your concrete section, then you're you're on easy street. You can just use the equation for the minimum shear required, which is AV, area of shear, minimum, divided by S, which is spacing. Uh, and that equals the max of those two equations. So you determine the value of each of those equations separately, and whichever one is the max, that will then equal the area of steel divided by the spacing. Just a quick tip to make that equation a little faster. Any F prime C less than 4400 PSI, then the 50B divided by FYT will govern. So our next step, if that is not our case, if VU is greater than VVC, so the shear that we're designing for is greater than the capacity of the concrete section, then you have to go into more detail for the shear reinforcement. And in our case, that is the case because phi VS required, which is the shear capacity of the steel VS equals VU minus phi VC. So that's 35 kips minus 13.8 kips equals 21.2 kips. Now from here, you have two additional checks you want to make. You want to make sure that you're not going to design a beam with too much congestion of shear reinforcement. So you want to check that your phi V S required is less than for phi V C. So 21.2 kips, which is well less than the 4 V C, uh, which is 55.2 kips in our case. And remember your phi V C is 13.8. So we're good to go. Now, if your phi V S is greater than 4 phi V C, uh, that's no good. You're going to have a lot more shear reinforcement kind of jammed into your beam section. You want to increase the size of your beam to get a stronger section to start with. So that's just a quick note. And also, I know that I'm going through some of these terms a little fast, but I also provide a PDF. I want to remind them to provide the PDF for download, so make sure you download that. You can follow along. Hopefully that, that helps out. Your next step you want to do is to determine the shear reinforcement spacing required S. And this is a pretty simple check. Uh, basically, you're going to check these two scenarios, whether VS is less than the 4 square root F prime CBD, or if VS is greater than 4 square root F prime CBD. Uh, so in our case, VS equals phi VS divided by phi, because make sure you want to take that reduction factor off. And so that's 21.2 kips divided by 0 0.75. So the VS that we need to design for is 28.3 kips. Plug that into the equation. We determine that VS is indeed less than the 4 yada 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 equation, uh, which is 36.8 kips. So in that case, we want to go ahead to the next step and we're going to determine our S max. So S max in our case is equal to D over 2 or 24 inches and it's the minimum of one of those two. So our D which is once again the depth of the tension reinforcement. Don't confuse that with the depth of the beam. I'll drill that into you because I often make that mistake. I made it my mistake a lot in school. 
So it's 14 inches divided by 2 equals 7 inches or 24 inches. So the minimum here is 7 inches. Next thing you want to do is to determine the area of shear reinforcement AV. And this is going to bring you up to the conclusion of your design. So this is also a very simple equation. Uh, AV equals phi VS times S spacing divided by phi D F Y T. So that's 21.2 kips, which we calculated before. Uh, times 7 inches, which is the spacing, divided by phi, which is 0 0.75, times 14 inches, depth of tension reinforcement, times the 60 KSI. Make sure that your equation is uh, agreeing as far as units. I'm in kips, so I'm using 60 KSI. So make sure that your units are agreeing. And that equals 0 0.24 inches squared. And that's the amount of shear reinforcement in area that we need to cover. So doing some quick checks, uh, I come up with number four bars. And, and typically shear reinforcement is either number three or number four bars. Uh, if you go any bigger than number four, they're typically hard to bend those bars. So number five and up, they're a little thicker. They're harder to bend in that 90 degree fashion. So I stick with number three, number four. So in this case, I use a number four bar. And so the area is still for one number four bar is 0 0.2 inches squared. But if you can envision the shear reinforcement in the concrete section, you know that it is placed in a tie fashion. So it looks like a rectangle tie. So when you take a cut of your concrete beam, you're going to have two sections of shear reinforcement to consider uh, one on the left hand side of the beam and one on the right hand side of the beam so your area of steel is always times two so that gives me 0 0.2 inches squared times two equals 0 0.4 inches squared and this is at seven inches spacing well we've made it to the end of our design tutorial it was pretty simple, pretty quick to design shear reinforcement for a concrete beam. I hope you all enjoyed the tutorial. I enjoyed talking about it. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background on some different avenues we could have taken to design shear reinforcement. We could have designed incline bars, which is technically more efficient use of the area of steel because it crosses the cracked plane at a 90 degree angle so you, you'll have better control of keeping those cracks closed uh, you won't see that much in practice just because it's a little bit harder to place those bars in the field and also in seismic areas where you have load reversal uh, incline bars do not work but in seismic areas you have load reversal so when the load reverses the shear is now acting on the opposite side of the beam so in this case we had a shear plane cracking on the bottom from our little uh, schematic on the first slide uh, if this was in a seismic area we would then have load reversal and possible cracks at the top acting in the opposite direction so if we had incline bars we wouldn't have any steel in that direction and that would be a very bad thing that will lead to possible brittle or sudden failure. You could read up more on this online. I encourage you to Google, study, read ACI, do all those things. Um, I just try to give you a little bit of extra information on this tutorial. Uh, with that said, I am done. I have cotton mouth, <laughs> but I enjoyed doing this tutorial. Look out for the next one, and I am out. Have a good day.